Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Patrick Sean. I'm an artist in Montgomery, Alabama, and in this video, I'll be painting this crazy cat that I sketched out a couple days ago. Recently, I've been doing a lot of commissions, but this piece hasn't been commissioned by anyone, so it's totally up for grabs. I'll be painting this onto an 11 by 14 wood panel that's been pre-gessoed, and this is my sketch. Originally, my plan was to put the sketch directly onto the panel, but it's smaller than I want it to be. Also, I have this other sketch that I'd like to incorporate into this piece, so the first thing I'll need to do is bring both of these into Procreate. Now that I have Procreate open, I'll open a new canvas and change the measurement to inches so I can set the width to 11 inches and the length to 14 inches. Once I have the canvas open, I can bring in my photos. Here, I'll be able to resize them and make sure I have them placed where I want them to be. I'll reduce the opacity, open a new layer, and I can start drawing over them. The reason I need to redraw these sketches is so that I can start placing color and do color fills because if I try to do it directly onto the sketch, it just sees it as one layer and it's gonna fill it all with a single color. One thing I'm always battling with myself in Procreate is trying to make every line perfect. Once you get into Procreate, you can make these perfect lines by holding the tip of your pencil down and it straightens it out, makes a perfect shape, or makes it perfectly tapered. Now, even though I'm bringing these drawings and sketches into Procreate to clean them up, resize them, and make them look better, I still want it to look like a drawing that I did. Most of what I love about my sketches and drawings in general is that they don't come from perfect lines. Also, this is gonna be redrawn onto my canvas and painted over, so unless I'm using this design for t-shirts or other merchandise, the sketches don't need to be perfect. I've got my sketch printed out to size and now I need to cut it up so I can tape it together. Let's pop this wood panel out of the packaging so we can turn it into a beautiful art piece. I've got my 11 by 14 gessoed wood panel, my transfer paper, and my masking tape. So let's get this sketch taped down and I can start transferring. While transferring, I just need to trace my line, so it's pretty easy. What really sucks is if I miss a line while transferring. Honestly, I meant to print this out in black and white and slightly faded so that I could trace over with the pen and I'd be able to keep up with which lines I've missed, but I didn't do that, so now I just need to be really careful. So it looks like I got everything here, it looks awesome, and I can move on. Before I start painting this piece, I'll apply an acrylic wash to my wood panel. An acrylic wash is a really watered down mix of acrylic paint, and you use it for a lot of reasons. The reason I'm putting it down on this project is so that I'm not painting onto a white surface. The contrast between the color of my paint and the white on the panel would be so strong it would skew the color tone of my painting while I'm working on it. So I'm going to apply a nice yellow earth tone here.
All right, this is day two of this painting. The acrylic wash is dried. I've got all of my colors picked out, so we're ready to keep moving forward and get this thing done. With my acrylic wash done, I can start applying the background. And I'll start with the sides of my panel first. For the background, I want all of these layers of green to ripple on top of each other, creating a glowing effect from behind the cat. When applying the background, I'm working back and forth from the edges in a circular motion. With the background done, I ended up bleeding over my characters just a little. I don't want this green to affect my colors or bleed through the final painting, so I need to cover these sections that I bled over with white. While recording, I had no idea that my head was in the way of the camera this much, so in the future, I guess I'll just have to be more careful. Now that my layer of white's done, I can really get started painting these characters. My main goal here is to just get the initial color down in each section. The hardest part of any painting and the constant battle that I face with myself is just getting started. It's so easy for me to stare at a project and start overthinking it. And one way that I get around overthinking is to just put the initial layers of paint down. Super dark for the cat's head, blue for his shirt, yellow for his tie, gray for the skull, whatever it needs to be. Just get one layer of paint down in each section and then I can go back and fix what I need to. Add detail, emphasize certain areas, and so on. But the first battle I always have to win with myself is to just get started. All right, I'm on to day three of this painting. I've got all of my major colors down, so today is gonna to be all about adding depth, definition, detail, and hopefully I can get this piece knocked out today. Shading isn't always my strong suit. I'm usually better with highlights, so what I like to do is start with a dark color and then paint light colors on top of that until I get exactly what I want. So I'll paint all of these details and I'll just be adding layer on top of layer on top of layer while adding touches of highlights to these characters.
I've never done a character in this art style before, and the more I work on it, the more I love how it looks. So I'll definitely be doing a lot more work like this one. What I love most about projects like this is that since I've never done this art style before, it's one more thing I have in my wheelhouse. Something I can add to my experience as I level up as an artist. So I'm always trying to experiment with new techniques and art styles. So when I see something that I think is really interesting, I try that out. I love trying things I'm not comfortable with because in my opinion, it's the best way to grow. Honestly, I was really nervous to get started on the cat. Looking at my sketch, I didn't have any of this shading planned out. I'm just kind of making it up as I go and feeling it out. While adding the outlines to this painting, I'm not using black like I've done in the past. I'm using extremely dark versions of each color to give it a sense of realism while still being a cartoony art style. As I'm finishing this painting, the cat's eyes look flat to me, so I'm going to add spirals to give them some depth. Now that the painting is finished, I'm going to put several layers of varnish. What I'm using is a high gloss varnish that I mix with water. I water it down so the varnish will level out and you won't be able to see the brush marks which would distract from the artwork. The brush marks won't completely disappear, but they become imperceptible after it dries. So with the painting finished, let's look at some final shots.
All right, that's it for this painting. I had so much fun working on this project. You can check it out and more of my artwork at pdshawn.com. Also, check out my Instagram, pdshawn.studios. And as always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons who help support my channel. And if you want to support my channel also, go to patreon.com slash pdshawn. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you guys next time.